You should have seen me. I gave quite a performance. Now, the first thing that happened was that Eric came and he'd been beaten up by some bullies. Oh, no! That was exactly Miriam's reaction, pure panic. On the other hand, I remained calm and collected to the point that Miriam warned me about issuing any uh, I told you so remarks about the neighborhood, at which point I said to her, Bullies are part of every neighborhood. <laughs> so how does she react to the new you? I really don't know, Dan. I'm sure she's uh, racking her brain trying to figure it out. But I do know this, that I will continue to be calm, cool, and collected in order to get her complete confidence. Oh, that's good. That's fine, Charles. But uh, let me suggest that you also start to keep a record of this type of thing. Huh? Oh, you mean for the court hearing in six months? Exactly. This is the kind of incident that we can use to make our case stronger next time around. Well, I can assure you that uh, I will not overlook any detail, no matter how small, if it means permanent custody of my grandson. Dave Phillips is here, Harold. Oh, good. Dave, have a seat. Break it to him gently, huh? Uh, break what gently? That's uh, going to be kind of tough to do now, isn't it, with that introduction? Your trial date's been set. Well, when is it? A week from this coming Monday. from Monday. That doesn't give us much time to prepare, does it? No, but I've uh, stepped up my investigation. How's it going? Right now, not so good, I'm afraid. Well, gee, I, I wish I could help Harold, but I just can't remember. I've racked my brain, but I still don't know why or how I, I got outside of Amber's apartment the night of the murder. I know. There's really not any point in trying to remember anymore. You mean you're giving up? Oh, no, no. Far from it. I'm just changing my approach. See, Dave, if we can't prove that you didn't kill Kate, our next best shot is to, uh, in addition to building up your good character in court, see if we can point the finger at other possible suspects. Yes, but I'm the only one who's been accused. That may be so, but you're not the only one with motive and opportunity, and I think I can prove that. Enough to keep the jury from convicting me? What we have to do is raise a reasonable doubt. That's all. If it takes some finger pointing to do that, let's do it. I've got my detective working on it. He's come up with a clear, unidentified set of fingerprints, came off the panic bar on the outside door exit, uh, the back door to Amber's apartment. Yeah. Uh, you who knows, it may not mean anything, but it could. Yes, but anybody could have touched that bar. I mean, any friend or neighbor could have, could have, could have touched that bar and had fingerprints on it. Yeah, but uh, suppose it wasn't a friend or neighbor. Well, I'm not going to get angry with you. Whatever you, whatever you say, Howard, I, I won't be angry. Are you feeling okay? Everything, no, look, don't give me this. I'm doing fine routine. In court, your mental state, your emotional state, are gonna have a very definite effect on the jury's decision. We want them to see you as calm, as relaxed. Concerned naturally, but with a clear conscience. The pressures of the courtroom will amplify any doubts you may have way out of proportion. Well, it hasn't been easy. But maybe it's a good sign I slept through the night. At least without waking up in a cold sweat. And there was a, well, without the sense of isolation. That's good. Well, maybe it was talking to Terry that did it. You know, she gives you a sense of clear perspective. I guarantee you she's praying for you, too. Uh, Charles, before you put that away, there's one more bit of information that I think might be helpful later on. About Miriam? About Miriam and Babs Farley, both. I'm listening. Well, yesterday, your daughter and Miss Farley were getting their jollies by screaming fire at the King's Arms Hotel. 
I don't believe you. Well, believe it. I witnessed it, Charles. Miriam is more adolescent than I thought, and more vicious. But why? Uh, who would she want to frighten? One person in particular, and terrify would be a better word, I'd hmm. say. See, not only were they yelling fire in the second floor hallway of the hotel, but they kept the door closed on the object of their little practical joke, hoping to cause her to scream. Astonishing. Also illegal, Mrs. Lucas. Again, I ask why. I, I, where did you hear this? Well, you see, Nancy Lawson is a client Wait of Wait a minute. She... Nancy Lawson is a client of yours? That's right. I'm representing her in a malpractice suit. You are not serious. Well, I certainly am. Why do you say that? Well, you have made one terrible mistake. You stay away from that woman. Oh, so you've met. I met? I almost married her. <laughs> you married... Oh, now, Nancy uh, never mentioned anything about that to me. No, and don't you tell anybody else either. Let me tell you something. That is as close as I ever want to come to being taken over completely. She was just after Mr. Carpenter's money. Dan, she wormed her way into my life, took advantage of my affections. Came right at a time when I was being estranged from my first wife. She moved in here, and when I finally asked her to leave, she contrived to fall down those stairs and fake a paralysis of her legs. Did she sue you for damages? Well, it was much worse than that. She wanted me to marry her. <laughs> Laugh if you want to, but I warn you, that woman is poison. Now, look, don't worry, Charles. I know all about Nancy Lawson. It's her greed that makes her such a good client. Mm-hmm. You mentioned a moment ago that she's suing somebody for malpractice. Who is it? Oh, I'm sure you've heard of him, uh, Dr. Ben Martin. Ben Martin? <laughs> yes, I have heard of him. Well, you seem pleased. Well, if Nancy can get something a little extra out of any member of the Davidson clan, more power to her. It's about time somebody punched a hole in that sanctimonious attitude of theirs. <laughs> now, unless the intruder was surprised and, uh, and, and scared away, there's no reason to think that the motive was theft. The police certainly don't think so. So, I'm going to present to them some... Alternate suspects. Gil Prescott, for one. Oh, no. I don't see that. Kate knew about Amber's abortion. She told Gil about it that night. Yes, but that wouldn't provoke him to turn on her. Even if he thought that Kate actually encouraged Amber to abort his child? When Brubaker first questioned him, he lied about having talked to Kate. And then there's Lee Carruthers, the man most likely to succeed, especially since his wife's death. Did you happen to notice in the newspaper how he's taken a big jump in the poll since then? Uh, no, I haven't, but... Uh... Well, he has. Seems like all the undecided voters have gone over to his side in sympathy. Yes, but it's ridiculous to assume that he'd do it. You told me that when you and Lee were both courting Kate, he tried to bribe you. Kind of romantic hush money. Yes, he offered me money to, to stay away from her. Well, doesn't it follow, then, that uh, if a man is ambitious and callous enough to offer money to protect his romantic investments, that, that he's going to maybe kill to protect his political interests? No, I don't think so. As much as I dislike the man, I don't think he'd do it. Even if his brand new wife, shortly before the election, was about to announce that the marriage was going to break up? Yes, but you can't prove that. No, I can't. But we're going to unravel this mystery one way or another. Now, I might not have the proof right now. But I've got a nagging suspicion that things weren't all that great between Lee and Kate. And if I can raise a reasonable doubt in the minds of the jurors by pointing up that fact, then I've got to use it. Well, uh, you keep me posted? Sure, I will. And look, I, I want you to keep trying to think about uh, other people that were uh, involved with Kate. Uh, uh, people who may have had jealousies or rivals. Any connection at all. Right. I'll do my best. Good. I will, too. Well... Thank you. You bet. They were trying to make me yell so that they could prove my voice was working. Oh. And you were trying to open the door. <laughs> yes. Oh. I was never so scared in my life. Oh, that's why they didn't <laughs> tell me. Oh. And they'll wish they never even thought of it by the time I get through with them. Oh, sweetheart, don't you cry now. I know how it is when folks hurt you. 
was, it's not just that, you know. Dad's told me that I'm never going to be able to speak again to sound normal. Well, how, how is that? I, I don't think I've ever read anywhere where a person has to be a, have an affliction all of their lives. Yeah, but listen to me. I mean, I sound like a frog. I mean, worse than a frog. At least you can hear them. Well, I hear you just fine, honey, and so does the Lord. Why don't you just tell him how you feel and ask him to heal that broken voice box of yours? Well, what's the matter? Don't you think he can handle a little job like that? Not for me. Oh, since when have you been the exception to the rule? I've just done so many bad things. Oh, well, sweetheart, I know you've done a few bad things in your life, but haven't we all? I think there's a verse in the Bible that says, he who is forgiven much will love much. No, I can't. Oh, why don't you just come on back home with me, Nancy? No, I, I don't want to see Babs and Miriam again. Oh, well, I can understand that, sweetheart. But just let me tell you something. Right now, those two are feeling very sorry for themselves. But I'm sure what they did, they thought they were doing to help Ben Martin. Yeah, but I own I'm, I'm not faking it. I know you're not, sweetheart, and that's what's probably making them feel even worse about it. But can't you see what they were getting at? Now, I'm not saying what they did was right. But you know, a malpractice suit is a pretty serious thing. And you must admit, Nancy, that you have lied on more than one occasion to get what you wanted. Why don't you just come on back to the house with me, sweetheart? I'll see if I can't talk to those two and maybe... Well, why don't you just think about it, huh? Okay? I don't... Don't go, please. Oh. Don't go. stay with you, I own, but, but Dan is my attorney, and he says that I have to stay here. Nancy, you can go anywhere you please. Well, look, I know how you feel about this malpractice suit, but I have to go ahead with it. I don't have any money. I can't even get a job like this. Well, now, who says so? There might be some brand new opportunity opening up for you, something that you hadn't even thought about. You know, God may be just using this little setback of yours as a way to point you toward it. You know, he's got a real regular way of turning bad into good. That is, when we put our trust in his hands. I don't want to sue Ben. Well, why are you doing it, sweetheart? Well, I know he saved my life, but, but he left all these awful scars. I oh, don't... Why don't you look at those scars as a kind of reminder that you're alive and not dead. Look, I don't know what I want to do. Well, Ben knew what he did when he, what, what to do when he rescued you, honey. I mean, you know, he's a, he's a good doctor and surgeon. And he used good judgment when he pulled you out of that smashed car, or else you wouldn't be here today. Well, pardon me, I didn't know that you had company again, Nancy. And I didn't realize you were raised in a barn. Does he always come in like this without knocking? Oh, well, he has the key. Yes, just in case Nancy's unable to get up. Oh, for what reason would she might not be able to get up? It's okay. I don't... No, no, Nancy, no, Mr. Redland's right. I mean, after all, I can always get the manager of the hotel to let me in if you can't come to the door. Here, Nancy, you, you take this back. That's right. Miss Redland, as you can see, this is all completely legitimate. I merely pay for this room so that Nancy has a nice place to stay. Oh, well, she has a nice place to stay that wouldn't cost you one red cent. Now, believe me, it's, it's better this way, Miss Redland. <laughs> Sweetheart, I have to go over to the clinic. And I'll be back to visit you tonight, if not tonight, tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Redland. Oh, <laughs> she is quite a character, isn't she? <laughs> the key, Nancy. Uh, <laughs> Dan, did you come about some news about the case? Uh, no. No, as a matter of fact, I just uh, came by because I thought that we might spend some time together. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Good. Uh, these are for you, 
sweetheart. So, uh, what's up? Vicky and I are gonna tie the knot. Yeah, you've been saying that for the past few weeks, right, but, uh, that's against my better advice. I didn't tell you when. And I'm supposed to ask when, right? That's right. No, this afternoon. Please tell me you're kidding. I'm not kidding. That's why I cut my hair. <laughs> no, we found this justice of the peace up in Perrysville, right? He, he, he does the ceremony, no wait, fills out the license, voila. Gee, Peter, it sounds super romantic. What's more romantic than eloping? Your mother doesn't know about it then? Nobody knows. You better tell her, Peter. I'll tell her after the ceremony. <laughs> She's gonna love that. Well, I figure. Look, she doesn't agree with the engagement thing. So she's not about to harm our marriage. It's gonna be easier for everybody in the long run. We get married, and then, hey, she'll welcome Vicky with open arms. Yeah, but it's like putting a gun to her head. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. She just doesn't understand us. Vicky and I are meant for each other. So where are you gonna go on your honeymoon? Oh, it won't be a honeymoon. Not until she's let out of the rehab center. No, that's romantic. Listen, tell me, when she finally does get released, where do you plan on living? Uh, the Married Students Project? Depresses me just to think about it. Well, me too. Um, we're gonna live at my house, I think. I mean, yes, we are. We're gonna live there. Live with your mom at home? <laughs> that's worse. Well, that, that's worse to you, because you've been trying to run away from home ever since you were in grade school. No, I haven't. Thanks. Thanks, Dad. Hey, check that out, will you? Now, there's something I'd run away from home for. Hey, don't tell anybody about my plans, OK? She's got to be a freshman. I mean, I don't see any pin. Man, I'm glad I never asked you for marriage advice. You didn't ask me for my advice. That's true. Now you see why. Peter, these are the best years of our lives, and you want to throw them away. That's where you're wrong. See, the best part of my life is the part I'm going to spend with me. Yeah, tell me that when you're 30. Competition. Go away, Troy. Isn't he a frat brother? Sergeant at arms wouldn't you know it. He's thrown me in a pond twice already. Once more, and I'm out. <laughs> When's your initiation? Hey, she's, she's getting antsy. OK, so you won't let me sit here. How about giving me your phone number? No. You're not very friendly, are you? I'm waiting for someone, thank you. I'll move. All I want is a hint. Where are you staying? Hadley Hall? The Commons? Look, would you just leave me alone, please? I think he's getting out of hand. Don't get any bright ideas, Davidson. He'll cream you. Said his name's Troy? Hold it, Pete. I'm telling you, I'm not here with you. I don't even know you. No! Are you the manager here? This guy's bothering me. Um, uh, <clears throat> hey, Troy, oh boy. Why don't you, uh, find your seat somewhere? I better put these in some water. Nancy, wait. Now listen to me. Don't be ashamed of how you look. Now, I know that those butchers put you through a lot. But they can't destroy the tender, loving woman that you are. All right. Go put them in some water if you like. Oh, Nancy, I uh, ordered us a champagne dinner for tonight. I hope that doesn't interfere with any of your plans. I uh, thought we might just stay here in the room. I, I don't imagine Mrs. Redland will be coming back to visit us, will she? No, no, I don't think so. I, I had to just put them in the sink because uh, I don't have anything. Oh, oh well, I'll have them bring up a vase later so we can set off our flowers. Our Nancy Flowers. How do you know me? Uh, everybody knows Troy. This isn't what you're waiting for, is it? Yeah, I am. And uh, you can tell, obviously, she can't wait for you to leave. No kidding. This is the one, huh? Yeah, I am, buddy, and uh, I'm not going to say it again. You're not, huh? She's not worth it. Thanks a lot, really. Guy's a jerk. Are you the manager of this place? 
No, I'm not. I'm just sitting over here with uh, my ex-friend. I guess he couldn't wait around. Well, I'm Courtney, and you can sit here if you like. No, no, that's no, okay. Uh, I bet that's my order right there. What'd you say your name was? Courtney. Courtney. Pete Davidson. You want to join us? Sure. All right. Well, uh, I guess Gary couldn't wait. Hey, who was that jock anyway? I didn't know him. Uh, I don't know. Some frat brother at Gary's. Well, I'm impressed. Oh, with Troy? No, with you. Nothing, really. Oh, it was nothing, really. Uh, the French fry? Thank you. Are you a freshman? Yeah, I guess it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Not really. I just haven't seen you around, you know. Where are you from? Well, I am new in Kingsley, that's for sure. Well, it's not that bad a place. You'll get used to it. I'm a Kingsley native. Peter Davidson from Kingsley. Hey, who'd you take for freshman comp? First term. Fiedler. Oh, I have Ragland. Well, well. Yeah, Courtney. what have we here? Uh, this is Gary Courtney. Hi, Gary. Uh, last name? Just Courtney is OK. Oh, well, hello, Courtney. Welcome to the village. Thank you. So Peter's been telling me that you're a friend of that gorilla that was hassling you before. Well, uh, not, not really a friend. Well, uh, we just like, uh, well, we live in the same house. I, I hardly even know him. <laughs> Well, I'm here on a family matter. Is Harold around anywhere? Oh, no. He had to go down to the uh, courthouse and then stop by the police department, something about Dave Phillips. Tell me what you need him for, and I'll have him call you as soon as he gets back. Oh, don't bother to call Harold. I'm here to see you and you alone. Oh, really? Yes. Does the word fire ring a bell by any chance? <laughs> 